Hi folks. So in this video, we're going to look at uh, how to take the derivative of scalar multiples, sums, and differences of functions. So these are basic combination rules for derivatives, and these rules are going to follow almost immediately from the corresponding uh, laws for limits themselves. So what are these basic combination rules? So there's going to be a scalar multiple rule. And that says if you start with a differentiable function f and you scale it by a constant k and you want to take its derivative, turns out that you're able to just take the derivative of the function and then scale it by that same constant. There's going to be a sum rule. And that sum rule says that if you want to take the derivative of two differentiable functions that you've added together, you get to take the derivatives independently and then add those functions together and that's your derivative. And then there's going to be a difference rule, which not shockingly says if you take the difference of differentiable functions and you want to take the derivative of it, then you just take the derivatives independently and subtract. So our goal today is to prove all these rules. And so let's remind ourselves what these combination rules are all about. Basic functions can be gathered together in simple ways to build more complicated functions. So you could take, say, these three functions that you studied in pre-calculus, you can multiply by a scalar, you can add functions together, and then you could take differences of functions, and so you can build up more complicated functions out of simpler functions and the simple operations of addition, scalar multiplication, and subtraction. So now, for the moment, let's take as a given that the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, the derivative of sine x is cosine, and the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So you may have run into one or more of these facts already, or maybe you haven't, but it doesn't matter. You can just take as a given that these three facts are true. And given these three facts, the question is, how do we calculate the derivative of this combination of functions? And so our goal is to determine the rules for calculating derivatives of scalar multiples, sums, and differences of differentiable functions. So let's start with the scalar multiple rule. If f is differentiable at x, and, we've, and we've got, so we've got this differentiable function, and we scale by a constant k, the question is, what is the derivative? Now, in this case, and then the next case, we're going to go right back to the fundamental definition of derivative. How do we find a derivative? We take the limit of secant slopes. In this case, we'll use the h form of our definition. So we have k f of x plus h. That's your scalar multiple function evaluated at x plus h. And then you take, uh, you, you subtract off the scalar multiple function evaluated at x, divide by h, look at the limit as h goes to 0. That's our definition of derivative. Now, in this case, we've got a common factor of k, which we can factor out inside the numerator like this. But then, here's the key. There's a limit law for scalars. And since this is a constant, we can pull this right out of the limit. And now you recognize what's left right there is the definition of the derivative of the original function f. And that's our proof. So we noticed that when we went back to our definition of derivative as a limit of secant slopes, we were able to show that the derivative of a scalar multiple of a function is the scalar multiple of the derivative of that function. So there's our first of our combination laws. And the motto here is scalar multiples may be factored out of derivatives. And this is going to really facilitate your derivative calculations. So if you know, for example, that the derivative of sine x is cosine x, then you're able to conclude that the derivative, say, of 13 sine x, right? You can just slide that right out. 13 comes out of the derivative. 13 derivative of sine, which is cosine. So the derivative of 13 sine x is 13 cosine x. To take another example, if you know that the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, then you're able to conclude that the derivative of 1 3rd x cubed is 1 3rd the derivative of x cubed, and the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, so that quickly reduces to x squared. So the scalar multiple rule is very convenient, and you should be willing to slide these constants right out of the derivative process. All right, next up, the sum law. If f and g are both differentiable at x, what is the derivative of the sum function? So to facilitate this calculation, we're going to give the sum uh, function a temporary name. So we'll call it s of x. We're going to define s of x to be f of x plus g of x. And so let's just give this a test drive, right? If you were to take s of 3, what are you doing? You're taking f of 3 plus g of 3, and you're adding them together. Pi, same story. 
Say you're evaluating the sum function at 1 plus root, root, root 2. Let's be clear about what happens here. That's f of 1 plus root 2 plus g of 1 plus root 2. And then most importantly, s of x plus h is going to be f of x plus h plus g of x plus h. All right, so now let's find the derivative of s at x. We're going to go right back to our fundamental definition of derivative as a limit of secant slopes. So here it is. That is clearly the derivative of the function s at the argument x. And so now we're going to isolate this numerator and play with it a little bit. So remember, here's s of x plus h, and here is s of x. And we need to take the difference of these two. And now we're just going to perform a little simple algebra here. So we're just reshuffling the terms and getting the signs correct. And, and you should make sure that this calculation is correct. But this is just a uh, reworked uh, expression for s of x plus h minus s of x. And now we're ready to look at this quotient. So what we'll do is we'll take our expression we just got and we're going to multiply by 1 over h just to save some space here. And now we're going to distribute across this plus in the middle. And so there we have a new expression for s of x plus h minus s of x over h. Now we're ready to take the limit to find the derivative, and we're going to substitute in this new expression. And we're going to remember that we have a limit law for sums, so we can de decompose this into the sum of these two limits. And now we look at this and we recognize on the left-hand side we have the derivative of f, and on the right-hand side we have the derivative of g, and that's it. We've got our derivative of the sum function is the sum of the derivatives. So that is the sum law for derivatives. And the motto here is that the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. So let's give this a test drive. If you know that the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared and the derivative of sine is cosine, then the derivative of x cubed plus sine is the sum of the derivatives independently, and that's just 3x squared plus cosine x. Finally, the derivative of a difference. So this actually isn't we're not going to go back to our definition of derivative for this because actually when you think about it it's just a consequence of the first two rules because after all when you subtract two functions what you're really doing is you're adding two functions where the second function has been scaled by a factor of negative one and and so then we're going to apply the sum rule for derivatives we just proved a moment ago and then we're going to apply the scalar multiple rule for derivatives that we used a moment ago and now we're just going to change notation. We're going to go back to Lagrange notation. So there's g prime of x. And then, of course, because we're adding negative 1 times g prime of x, that's just f prime of x minus g prime of x. And there's our rule for differences. The, the derivative of a difference is the difference of the derivatives. And so there's our scalar multiple rule. There's our sum rule. These rules are fundamental. You should be willing and able to use them all the time. They're going to make your calculations go so much quicker. And it's good to remember that these rules follow almost immediately from the analogous rules for limits. So they, they truly are fundamental properties that derivative functions have. OK, so let's close the loop and go back to the original example we considered at the beginning of the video. Given these three facts about the derivatives of x cubed, sine x, and ln of x, what is the derivative of this combination of those three functions? So when we apply the sum, scalar, and difference rules to this derivative, we get 3x squared plus 5 cosine x minus 1 over x. So make sure you understand these laws backwards and forwards because you really want to be able to apply them all over the place to make your life easier as you calculate derivatives.